Hey guys, I'm one of the co-captains of Team Avalanche 65-3, and we decided to put together a presentation that introduces new teams into FTC in general. So here it is, getting started with robotics. So here's an outline of what we'll talk about. So first, we'll, I'll give a little bit of description about our team, and then we'll transition more into what to expect with FTC. This includes what resources are at your, are at your disposal for hardware, software, and everything in between, organizing and managing a team, what competitions consist of, and how the schedule works out, outreach, engineering notebook, social media, and also the business plan and useful links that will help you transition throughout the season. So a little bit about us. Our team started three years ago, and um, in 2014, we had the opportunity to go to the World Festival in St. Louis, and this was a great experience for us because not only as a second-year team did it allow us to meet other teams and learn more about FTC, but it gave us the experience of going to a big competition and having that opportunity to compete with a lot of teams from around the world and share our experiences with others. We're a school-based team from Columbus Academy, which is a high school in Gahanna, Ohio, and this will be our fourth year as a team with the 2015 and 2016 season. So what to expect? Um, the typical season for most rookie teams, and as well as returning teams as well, lasts around about five to eight months. Now, a lot of really experienced teams will have a longer preseason, which means that over the summer, they'll do a lot of their outreach over the summer. They'll build a frame for, for the robot, they'll get together and educate new team members, but the typical season lasts from five to eight months. And um, what we've noticed is that most successful FTC teams, they have at least a schedule of five to 10 hours per week. I mean, the top teams, they can meet up to 15 to 20 hours a week, but most teams that we've talked to meet for five to 10 hours per week. And, but this really is variable upon team size and participation. So say if you have a larger team and you have a significantly more team members than other, team, uh, than other teams will have, then it would make sense to meet more, to keep everyone more updated, and to keep everyone more engaged with the process while continuing through the season. Um, what we've noticed is the cost of the rookie season is around $3,000, and this includes registration, buying materials, a little bit of travel, but um, this price can definitely go up depending on how far the team advances, because if you advance to um, Super Regionals or Worlds, for example, you'd also have to pay for hotels and the registration of those bigger events. Um, this is just a brief timeline that describes your FTC season. So today, that would be the day of the kickoff. This year, the kickoff is on September 5th. And so um, what we've noticed is that the best time to build is from kickoff, to when the, so that's when the challenge is announced, to winter break. And you really want to spend the time getting together all your team members, brainstorming ideas for the robot, and then building the robot, and start, start prototyping, start redesigning it, and really try to get like a solid base done by the end of winter break. And winter break for us, that's around December 19th. So um, most, the a lot of teams, they differ in what competitions they go to. Usually the first competitions that we go to are in early January, but I know that there are some teams that compete in December and November as well. So really, it's up to the team to figure out when they want to stop building and when they want to start programming and refining the robot. So um, that's really dependent on the team and when you're first competing. But for us, we try and leave around a three week to a one month period to where we can really refine, test, really prototype, and really redesign the robot to make sure it's as effective as possible when the first competitions come around. Um, so for us, the first competition is usually around January, and depending on how far we advance that season, we can go up to April, which is where Worlds is, um, which is when Worlds is. And um, but we also there's are, there are some teams that uh, that finish by February, so that's, that would be the state competition. So that's also dependent upon how far your team advances through the season. Um, here's just a brief information about what items, in our opinion, that we think rookie teams should have. So Tetrix kits, these are the basic buildings. Uh, these are the basic um, fundamental supplies for building a robot. And we found that these are really effective at building a base and also teaching new teams about how to use this new technology and also build, just build robots in general. Um, obviously you need an NXT, an NXT and this is kind of the, like the main control center of your robot. We'll speak a little bit more about this later on. Um, other supplies that you need is you need sensors, you need tools, so tools, hardware tools, um, soft tools, allen wrenches, anything big as well to repair and continue building a robot. One thing that we found really useful and that we've, been had, we've had the privilege of having is a 3D printer. And obviously this is optional, but CAD modeling, so computer-aided design, it's a really valuable tool that you can use to custom print parts for your robot. So you can um, CAD online diagrams of exactly what you want and print them out with a 3D printer. And if you don't have access to a 3D printer, there's a lot of places in Columbus that do. And maybe finding some of those areas and then reaching out to them to see if you can maybe use a 3D printer is a great, great tool that you can have. Miscellaneous, this includes um, flyers that you would want to bring to competition, uh, anything extra that you think your team would need to compete through the season. 
um, pit decorations, these are mainly for larger competitions. So pit decorations are more applicable for super regionals or worlds where you have bigger pits and team spirit and decorating your pit and making, sure, making yourself stand out is really highlighted. So this could include anything from team banners to just crazy arts, art decorations that you would like in your pit. Um, team spirit's a big one. So one thing you'll uh, see in FTC is that everyone will have team shirts. So making sure that you have team spirit and that uniformity when you're at competitions is really important. And then lastly, you need um, money to register as a team. So where to buy stuff? Um, there's a lot of discounted parts to the FTC website, and you'll see um, we'll have a handout available on our website at academyrobotics.com that'll make this more clear. Um, so what we what we figured out is that the parts that we like to buy that we buy at these discount sites are the Tetrix, Andy Marf, Matrix, and Lego parts, and we found that these are relatively inexpensive and that we've been able to get fairly good prices for these parts, and we re really recommend going to these websites. Um, Robot C, that's the old software, so we actually have a presentation coming up, and we'll put it on our website as well. We did a lot of work this summer with the new technology, and that'll uh, provide more information about the new software that FTC just announced, and also give you guys some more tools about how you can approach that as well. Um, if you guys are looking for some inexpensive tools, one website here is harborfreight.com, and that's a great website. Um, parts and raw materials, McMaster, they actually they ship out immediately, and if you order a part, say on a Monday, like you, sometimes you can even get it by that Wednesday and Thursday. So it's a it's a great tool that you can use, and definitely check out these websites. Um, some learning resources. So hardware learning resources. We when we were a rookie team, we used this website to kind of keep everyone updated about how to build a robot using Tetrix. And so definitely check out this link. Um, other resources are YouTube and Google. So really, you can Google other teams. Uh, you can YouTube and look up videos. A lot of a lot of teams have put up resources for hardware and software, and one of the ones that we've referred to in the past is Google Robotics, and if you search them up on Google or YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to find their hardware resources, which are extremely, extremely helpful. So we'd like to start by organizing a management team. So this really applies to when you have a bigger team. When we first started, we were around 15 to 20 team members. So making sure that everything was organized and that everyone was involved through management was really essential to our team. So what we like to do at the beginning of the season is based on how many team members we have, we always develop a structure. So say this year um, we have around 20 team members. So what we want to do is we create weekly emails where we send out a list of objectives for the next week. So everyone, even if they can't make the meeting, is updated on the progress that's being made each week. Um, what we like to do with bigger teams as well is departmentalize. So you'll obviously have individuals with different interests on your robotics team. And FTC is not just about building and programming. You have fundraising, you have outreach, you have judging, you have team spirit. So um, we really like to split people up based on what they're interested in. And this allows you to get into a smaller group within your team, really connect with them, and make even greater progress by just focusing on one single area. If you are a smaller team, so say you only have three or four team members, maybe you could still departmentalize, but uh, uh, you could have everyone do build uh, hardware and software, but then maybe each of the team members can take one of the special categories. So maybe one person could focus on social media, one person could focus on outreach, one person could focus on judging, etc. So it's really up to your team. Um, and the biggest thing that we really want to stress is set goals and deadlines, because if you don't, it can be really hard to manage your team and organize a structure for going to competition. So setting goals and deadlines about when you want to get something accomplished is really, really important. Um, so a brief, uh, some information about the competition. So usually, uh, for a say for a regional event, if the competition is on Saturday, the teams will go in on Friday night and they'll have something called a robot inspection. And here at the robot and software inspection, um, pretty much there's a series of requirements that your robot has to fit under. And these are all more, and laid out in more detail in the game manual on the FTC website. But pretty much the organizers of the tournament and the volunteer staff there, they check to make sure that your software and robot um, is pretty is legal, is allowed to be used in the competition. And we'll go into the rest of this stuff with the later slides as well. So this just provides some more information about robot inspection. So make sure you check the game manuals to make sure you got you um, have the specific dimensions down and that your robot fits within those constraints. Setting up your pit. Um, so. This is also applicable for the larger competitions, but banners uh, banners that will have your team name, where you're from, that's really helpful for other teams that are scouting. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but really it helps you guys stand out and helps everyone at the competition know who you are, which is really important. Trifolds, um, maybe a trifold that describes what your team did throughout the season, maybe introduces your team members, that's something to consider. 
buttons, brochures, and freebies. So if you could pass out business cards, you could pass out buttons, you could pass out really anything so other teams can contact you guys later and you can have that communication that will um, mutually benefit both of your teams. Obviously, these are all the basic supplies, extension cords, make sure you have power in your pit, spare parts, um, screens, maybe if you want to show a video, and then very important, food. It's uh, the competition day, it's very long, so team members do get tired and hungry, so having just some small snacks around so you can refuel is really important as well. So now a little bit of information about the judging, and I know this is, could be really confusing for an FTC team. So judging in the FTC world at the competition is um, a team will have a 10 to 15 minutes uh, presentation scheduled with judges, volunteer judges at the FTC competition, and this is very important. Um, what you see here is advancement criteria. So, say, so when you compete at a regional tournament, not all the teams that compete advance to states or tournaments pass that, obviously. So usually around five to six teams advance, but this is really based on the regional tournament and its size. And here you can see the list of advancement criteria. And um, the first advancement criteria is to qualify our host team, so the person who organized the competition. But after that, then you start getting into the champion awards and the robot awards. And the Inspire Award winner is pretty much the champions award. So whoever mm -hmm. overall has the best, um, whoever overall best um, uh, signifies the spirit of FTC. So they have a strong robot, they have strong uh, programming, they've done, conducted a lot of outreach, they have really strong team spirit, and they impress the judges. And this is where judging really gets into play, is because in judging, that's the only time you can use to convey what your team did throughout the season and why you deserve the Champions Award for being really strong, skilled in all these areas of FTC. And after that, you have um, the other, the winning lines captain, the winning lines first team selected, and the winning lines second team selected. Those are all robot awards. But with the Inspire, the Inspire second place, and the Inspire third place, that's where judging is really important. So in judging, you want to describe what you did throughout the season, how you approached your hardware design. Why you did what you did with software? Why you built? Why you used certain parts for your robot? Um, how did you uh, spread the spirit of FTC and promote STEM education in your area? How did you raise money for your team? So that's these. Um, what was your team spirit? Uh, what did you do on social media to engage others? So this is really why you're, you want to bring up all these topics and compress them into a 10 to 15 minute presentation, but also leave some time for Q and A. So scouting is also very important, um, as you guys will learn about at kickoff is that at each, uh, at, during each robot match, you're paired up with another team, which is your alliance partner, and you guys are facing two other teams. So when you cut your match schedule beforehand so you know what teams you'll be competing against and competing with the morning of the competition. So maybe like you have an hour or two hours that morning to maybe learn more about those teams. So what all, ev almost every team in an FTC competition will do is create scouting sheets. So pretty much these um, ask basic questions about teams' robots, and then you can you go around and ask teams about what's uh, does your can your robot accomplish this task? How how much does your robot weigh? What do you guys do for autonomous, for example? So this really helps you guys on in, in the later competition because say you're one of the top four teams that's going to be competing for the robot uh, for the robot alliance award. You want to make sure that you know which teams you're going to pick based on the scouting information that you gathered. So having team scouts and spending that time to create scouting sheets to learn more about other people's robots during the morning of the competition is really important. Um, so competing. So as I talked about earlier, you have an alliance partner and you guys are facing two other teams during each robot match. So before you start competing, you need to have a strategy with your alliance partner. And this is also where scouting plays in, so you know what they're capable of. You need to go up to their team and ask them and create like a uh, kind, of, kind of like a plan. So say you want to accomplish this one task in autonomous programming, you want to relate to them that you're going to accomplish this so they can work on so they can do another task to get both to get your alliance more points and help you guys win the match. Um, so there's a little bit more about competing. Um, during a regional tournament, there's five pairs, there's five rounds of paired competition. So these are predetermined. Um, these are randomly, uh, the FTC randomly chooses teams that are alliances and chooses the match schedule. And you'll know about these five rounds and who you're competing against and who you're competing with at the morning of this of that Saturday at the regional competition. And then after that, the top four teams, this is where we go into alliance selection. So the top four teams, they each choose two other teams, and these compete in like a round robin kind of tournament to determine who the overall winner is. And it's a tournament style competition, and this is also where scouting plays into, because if you're one of the top four teams, you need to know the other two teams that you're gonna pick. And you need to decide why you want to pick them and um, decide who's gonna be most helpful for you.
So uh, a huge thing about FTC is outreach. And what we mean about outreach is that FIRST, which is an organization that FTC fall on, falls under, is really big about spreading and promoting STEM education, promoting the values of FIRST, like gracious professionalism, um, science technology, engaging others through the learning process that is FTC. And what we've uh, done for outreach is we've done, we did a summer program this summer at our, uh, at our school. So we've invited a bunch of middle schoolers and lower schoolers into a fun summer week summer camp where we did science experiments, tried to really get them excited about science and technology, and then we gave them some resources for FLL teams, which is a lower division of first. What we've also done is we've hosted booths at the Ohio State Fair where it's an interactive booth where you have challenges, show a robot, and also promote FTC and try and get other other people, a passerby to um, join first or, or at least learn more about first. So outreach is a huge part of the team and it's really important for winning that Inspire Award, that Champions Award. And if you guys do any outreach this summer, make sure that it's documented and make sure that it's um, that you can present that well to the judges. And lastly, um, one of the one of the most important things as well is the engineering journal. So this is a physical notebook that you will be handing to the judges that documents your entire season. So this is um, required by the by FTC. And what this does is pretty much you start with the team section. So you introduce each of your team members. And you can see the entire detailed format on the game manual of the FTC rules page. But what you need to do with the engineering journal or EN journal is document each meeting. So what we do is every um, for the first 15 minutes before a meeting starts, we group together on a Google Doc, on a Google document, and we decide what we want to accomplish for that meeting. We write put down bullet points on that Google document. And then throughout the meeting time, the person that's worked on something, they will go to that Google Doc, type in what they did for that day, maybe add a picture or two, a schematic, a CAD design a picture of the robot, and then at the end of the day, we all group back together and we do a, what we call a, a reflections. So based on the tasks that we identified at the early, at, uh, earlier that meeting, we decide how we accomplish those tasks and what we want to work on for future meetings. So the engineering journal is very, very important, and it's essential if you want to win the Champions Award. It's required. And the teams with the best engineering journals are often the ones that advance through the competitions and win, those, uh, win the uh, Inspire Award. Uh, and a big thing as well, make sure you guys, you guys have pictures because like we say, pictures speak a thousand words. So it's really, it's a more creative way to engage with the judges and show them what you're doing. And uh, lastly, social media. So um, a lot of FTC teams that are just starting, they don't realize how important social media is. But judges really like to see that FTC teams are active on social media because it means that you're maintaining a presence on the online community and you're engaging with others around your community as well as other first teams. So having profiles on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or even having your own website is really important. And lastly, the business plan. So um, budgeting for the season before the season starts, because the worst thing that can happen is you guys buy, is buying too many materials or spending more money than you have. So budgeting, making sure that you're uh, you're using your like you're using your money wisely is really important. So at the beginning of the season, determine how much the robot parts are going to cost. Determine how much you're going to spend through travel expenses, and then work on raising that money or work on staying within your budget limit. And for fundraising, what we really uh, recommend is contacting, um, is using personal connections. So anyone that you know or a company that you've had close ties with, contacting them, telling them about what you do, and uh, requesting sponsorship is a really great way to, um, to raise money for the team. And there's also a lot of rookie grants uh, through, uh, through the first website that you can find. There's ones with PTC and um, other organizations, so definitely look out for those as well. Um, just a, a brief information, in 2014, uh, our budget during that season when we went to the World Festival, this would be 2013 to 2014, block party, it was around $18,000, but a, a lot of that was because we were traveling with large groups of team members to Worlds and uh, the regional championships. So a lot of that money is from food and like hotel, uh, and hotel costs, but the typical rookie season, if you um, are just counting in like regional and state competitions, is around $3,000. Uh, and lastly, with sponsorship, you also want to identify sponsorship levels. So this allows companies to know what the benefits they'll have for sponsoring your team. So this is just a brief sponsorship level bracket that we put together that you guys can take a look at and see if you like. And lastly, these are some useful links that we found really helpful. Definitely check these out and you'll see the descriptions next to it. Um, all, the, all of our slides will be available on our website, again, academyrobotics.com. So definitely check all those out and uh, yeah, good luck. And then if you guys have any questions, please feel free to contact us, academyrobotics.com, there's a contact us page. You can connect with our Facebook under Academy Avalanche, we have Twitter, we also have a Gmail, so 
definitely feel free to reach out to us. We are a fourth year team, so we know more about we know a lot about the competition, and we really want to help out as many river teams as possible. We could do Skypes, we could do if you guys are close, we could do a meetup and um, scrimmage. So anything like that would be really exciting. So definitely contact us, and yeah, good luck this season. Thank you.